Express Series, English for Human Resources by Pat Pledger, published and copyright Oxford University Press, 2007. Unit One, Exercise Ten. Good morning, David. How was your weekend?、Oh, excellent, thanks. Too short though. <laughs> yes, I know what you mean. Can we just have a word about the search for the personnel officer in Madrid? I know that it's your responsibility, but I'd like to be up to date on what's happening. Well, the job description and person specification have both been finalised and cleared with Francisco Menendez in Madrid. We're looking for someone with two to five years generalist HR experience, either an HR qualification or a degree, and last but not least, they must have high-level English skills. So, where are you planning to advertise? Well, firstly, on our European intranet. Although I don't think there's much chance of finding anybody in-house or in the European offices. Not sure I agree with you there. Don't forget, we took on a lot of employees with the merger in 2002. There might be some human resources potential there. Yes, you have a point there. Then I thought I'd put the vacancy with a couple of HR specialist recruitment consultancies, which operate across Europe. Okay. What about an ad in the Spanish HR trade paper? They have a monthly magazine, don't they? Yes, but there are very few job ads in there. I'll look into it though. And where are you going to interview? Well, I thought I'd offer interviews in the UK and Madrid, if that's okay. It's important that Francisco Menendez is involved. As the general manager, he and the personnel officer will need to work together closely on the future recruitment campaign in Madrid. Yes, good idea. Well, David, I can see you've got it all under control. Just keep me posted, please. No problem. Oh, sorry, I've got to run. I have a meeting about disciplinary procedures in about five minutes. Oh, and by the way, I'll be back in the office again on Thursday, so perhaps we can talk again then. Unit two, exercise eleven. I think that fills you in on the requirements of the job. So, could you tell me about your experience as a team leader in your present job? Yes, I've been with my present company for five years. I started as a member of the call centre and was promoted to a team leader two years ago. I'm one of eight team leaders, and we cover two shifts seven days a week. Could you explain what that involves? Yes, I'm responsible for ten call centre operators, and I report to the call centre supervisor. As you can see from my CV, I also did customer service in a production company for six years before that. Could you outline some of the problems you've had to deal with since you became a team leader? Well, they relate mainly to difficult customers. And to one or two negative relationships in the group. Could you enlarge on that? As far as staff relationships are concerned, if the problem is not solved by discussion and liaison within the team, then we can usually move people to another team. The team leaders meet weekly to discuss the overall situation, and we operate a very flexible call centre where the staff can move around different sections to gain more experience. And how do you go about dealing with difficult customers or with customers who have a complaint? We have a directive that says that a customer who is not happy about something should be transferred to a team leader immediately. It's one of our specific responsibilities. Otherwise, my staff are instructed to tell the customer that I will call them back as soon as possible. If I'm not there, then another team leader deals with it. What aspect of your job do you like best, Melanie? I particularly enjoy dealing with customers. I think I have an ability to build a good rapport with people on the telephone, and 
I believe I am good at it. Why do you want to leave your present job? Part of the call centre is being transferred to another location in the south. My partner has a good job in this area, and we have two children at school. I don't really want to move at this time, although my company did ask me if I would like to relocate. I see. Thank you. As you know, the next part of the interview process would be an assessment centre. Unit 2. Output. 1. It is not relevant to ask someone's age. You can work it out roughly from their CV and, anyway, the important thing is whether or not they have the ability to do the job, not how old they are. Yes, I totally agree, and older people have a lot of experience and knowledge to offer. Plus, they are often better employees than their younger colleagues. They're more reliable and take less time off work. Three. I'm afraid I can't agree with you on that. Older people are not as flexible, they expect higher salaries, and they get sick a lot. And they have trouble fitting into a young team. Companies want younger employees who can bring in fresh ideas and are not so expensive. Four. You can't run a company efficiently with young, inexperienced people. You need to retain older managers to train the younger ones, and you have to organise effective succession planning in a company. There should be capacity for a broad age range and diverse experience in all areas of the business. Five. I think laws on age discrimination are wrong. Why should the government be able to tell us who to hire? Only the companies know which people are right or wrong for the job. The government shouldn't tell us how to run our business. Unit 3. Exercise 1. We'd like to tell you something about conditions of employment. Of course, they'll also be described in the contract of employment and the company handbook, as well as in the offer letter. Some employment procedures are different from those in France, Marion, but there is generally more flexibility here, I think. Please... Ask about anything you are not sure of. So, let's start with your hours. Normal working hours are 9 to 6, Monday to Friday, with an hour for lunch. We currently operate a 40-hour week plus lunches. I'm afraid we don't operate flexi-time yet, and there may be overtime during busy periods. This is either paid or given as time off in lieu. I see. By the way... We are currently looking at more flexible working arrangements for our employees, but that's still in the future. OK. Could you tell me what happens if I'm ill? We pay for the first 12 weeks of sickness and operate a company permanent health insurance scheme, which continues to pay you after that. If you're ill, Marion, we expect you to phone in as early as possible on the first day to tell us and then to keep us informed after that. Yes, that's clear. Could you tell me something about the holiday allowance? Your annual paid holiday is 20 days, rising to 25 after two years' service. You must clear dates first with your department head, of course. I have a week's holiday booked in two months' time. Will you honour this? 
I'm sure that won't be a problem as it's only a week. We can discuss it in detail later. Great. Would it be possible to see the contract? Yes, of course. One will be sent with the offer letter. We'll be taking up references with your previous and present employer. I know in France you would normally include references with your application, but as you know, here in the UK, we prefer to apply for references ourselves, which is why we'll make the offer of employment subject to satisfactory reference. Yes, I understand. I've given details of my referees on the application form. My present employer in Marseille knows I'm leaving, so you can go ahead and contact them. I'll tell them to expect a letter from you. Well, thanks, Marion. I hope you'll be joining us soon and uh, look forward to welcoming you to the department. Maybe you'd like to meet some of the team over a bite of lunch? We'll all be going to the canteen in around 15 minutes. That sounds nice. Thanks. Yes. Well, I'll leave Chiara to look after you, Marion. We'll get the offer letter, contract and handbook in the post within the next 24 hours. Could you please let us know if you want to accept the job offer by the beginning of next week? Right. Uh, thank you both very much. I feel very positive about everything. Unit 4. Exercise 2. Natasha, shop floor team leader. You know, I only started here four months ago, but I'm already thinking about leaving. Jerry, the shop floor supervisor, is always correcting me, always telling me that things are done differently here, and he's so negative. He never gives any real help. And my team is also against me. I just don't know how much longer I can cope. I don't feel in control of the situation. Miguel, Marketing Director. Listen, I'm having trouble with a major project. I have put together a team of marketing staff from all our different branches, not just here, but all over the world, to work together to update our global marketing procedures. The problem is that nobody attends the meetings, and progress is slow. Several members have already asked to leave the project. Janet. Departmental Manager. I need help with a problem employee. He's making a lot of mistakes and is argumentative with colleagues. What's more, he's taken 20 days sick leave in the last year and other employees are complaining about it. Several clients have also recently complained about his attitude. Holger, project manager. I've been here seven years, and I desperately need some training on the latest regulations and accounting procedures in my field. I'm now coordinating an international project, and it's embarrassing that I know almost nothing about EU law. My boss tells me we're too busy for training courses, but it's essential that I'm totally up to date. What do you recommend? Can you talk to my boss? Unit 4, Exercise 6 Well, my biggest strengths are paying attention to detail and accuracy. Unfortunately, this slows me down and sometimes things get a little behind. How do you see the relationship with your team? OK. I don't seem to have any problems there. And the output of your team? Tell me about that. Well, we were on target for the first three months, and then we fell behind because of staff difficulties. 
To be quite frank, Peter, you were actually 25% down for six months of the year. Yes, well, that's because Antonio was on sick leave for so long. I see. When did you realise that his absence would cause problems with meeting targets? Well, I knew it would from the beginning. Then could you tell me why you didn't come to see me, Peter? You were away on that project in Turkey, and I had hoped to solve the problem myself by working overtime, and with the help of Karina Velans. So what happened then? Why didn't it work? Karina had problems at home and couldn't put in extra time, and I had too much to do with the day-to-day -day stuff. No one else was able to do it. With respect, I was only away for a month. Why didn't you raise this issue at the regular team meetings? I'm concerned you didn't feel able to discuss it with me. Actually, I prefer to deal with these things myself, and you're always busy. But the results are not very impressive, Peter. Your team can't help to resolve the problems if you don't discuss them. You need to think about delegating more to other team members. This will reduce the pressure on yourself. So, how do you suggest we go on? How can I help you? Well, perhaps we could have another team member until Antonio returns. And maybe I need some training in leadership skills and time management. Actually, there's a bit of a cultural problem with Antonio too. Before he went sick, he was having difficulty dealing with the Austrian formality and wasn't very happy here. That caused a few problems with other members of the team. OK. Well, neither of the first two suggestions should present a problem. I'll talk to our production director this afternoon. And I know about Antonio's problems. He has discussed them with me and we're sending him on some cultural training when he's back. We may do it for all your team as it's such a mixed group. But I'd like to add one other thing. I think you and I need to improve our communication, Peter. So let's meet weekly for a while and see how we go, OK? OK, that sounds good. Right. Going back to the question of output, we have to get your team's output up to scratch as soon as possible. I'd like you to arrange a meeting with your team and discuss how you can improve performance in the coming months, OK? Yes, fine. Finally, on a personal note, Peter, how is your wife settling in? I think there were a few problems initially. Yes, that's right. Actually, she's now found a job in her field. Uh, she's a physiotherapist, and she's very happy with it. So that has taken a lot of worry off my shoulders. Unit 5. Exercise 1. As you know, we need to review our benefits package to bring it in line with our offices in Denmark and the Netherlands. What is your view on this, Paula? Yes, uh, I think we need to introduce more family-friendly benefits and also flexible working hours. Too many staff are working overtime and having problems with their work-life balance. Hmm. Could I have your input, Steve? Uh... Yes. Um, what exactly do you mean by work-life balance, Paula? It means trying to achieve a better balance between work and home life. I see. Well, I'm definitely in favour of flexible working hours. However, I think we should also look closely at childcare and even elder care provisions to encourage some of our female staff back to work. In fact, I'd like to submit a proposal on this at a future meeting. Good idea. How much time do you need? Could you submit something at our regular meeting in a fortnight? That's fine. Paula, could you please prepare a summary of all our current benefits and ask accounts to print off a list of the annual costs? These subjects are high on the agenda at the next international meeting in Zurich, and I'd like us to have some good input for the meeting. Yes, OK. By the way, 
I've had several discussions with our colleagues in Amsterdam and Copenhagen on their ideas for new initiatives on flexible working, so I'll fill you in on that too. Good, and I'll give you the details of the new profit sharing bonus the directors have been discussing. Unit 5, Exercise 9. As you know, we haven't reviewed salaries for over a year. The board has agreed a maximum 5% increase from the 1st of October, and I'd like you to come back to me with recommendations for all your staff. I've produced a list here with the relevant data about each employee in marketing. That's fine. I've got one or two people who deserve more than 5%, particularly those who came from London and New York last year. They actually took a drop in salary, and they've reminded me about this several times. It's 18 months since we had our last raise, too. Well, we might be able to give more in one or two cases if you reward less in others. Don't forget... The rate of inflation is not expected to rise much in Britain this year, and so far, touch wood, we haven't had to make any staff redundant. Hmm. What's the position likely to be on the bonuses at the end of the year? Will they be slashed? And are there any other staff developments on the horizon? Well, we are proposing to carry out the performance reviews in November and early December, and that will determine the final bonus amounts. We're trying to separate the salary review from the performance review in future. We're also looking at flexible working and maternity and childcare issues. Your department is particularly vulnerable here as you have less staff and therefore a number of people who work too many hours. Also, there are several women on maternity leave at present who I believe you would like back. Frankly, Tim, I'm worried about the number of hours some of your staff are working. It has to be contained. OK. Uh, I hope we'll have the opportunity to discuss some of these issues at the management meeting. Thanks, Sophie. I'll get back to you within a week. Unit 6. Exercise 3. I'm afraid we've got a problem, Klaus. The 3% increase management agreed for the plant has been rejected by the union. Oh, what's behind it? They want the same increase as the white-collar staff, at least 5%. The union representatives held a meeting with their members last night and failed to reach agreement. What was your counter-argument? We haven't had an official meeting yet. That will be next week. But I told them that sales were down and that if things got worse, we might have to think about some redundancies in Amsterdam. I also reminded them that they had a 3% review a year ago. Did you know that the white-collar staff haven't had a review in salary for two years now? We froze their salaries because we had lost a huge contract. And then there was a recession. But we decided to review the shop floor workers to avoid industrial action. All this happened just before you joined. I see. Well, I know they want at least 5%. It appears there have been rumours of an economic downturn in the industry and the transfer of work to the Polish subsidiary. So, of course, the staff are nervous about the future of the plant. Despite this, they still feel 3% is too low and doesn't compensate them for loss of overtime over the last six months. It doesn't make any sense. But I must say I thought it might happen. We've got to plan our tactics. We can't offer 5%, that's for sure. But we don't want any strikes at present. Let's talk to the management committee again before the meeting. Unit 6. Exercise 8. Thank you for calling the meeting. We're happy to meet you today to work out a solution. 
We'd like to start by welcoming everyone and restating our proposals. Then perhaps you could outline why the offer was rejected by your members, Klaus. Yes, a three percent increase has been agreed, which we consider as a reasonable and fair offer given the current economic situation and the fact that our sales are down. The outlook isn't a very bright one at present. But we think things will improve in the next six to nine months, provided we can contain costs. I'd also like to remind you that you had a three percent review a year ago, while the salaries of the white-collar workers were frozen. But our members aren't happy with three percent, and since overtime was stopped six months ago, they feel they have suffered enough. It's a difficult situation. That's true. But they want a minimum of five percent. What's more, they are threatening industrial action if they don't get it. That's a bit unfair, isn't it? I heard there are some rumours going around about transferring work to a Polish subsidiary. Has this got anything to do with it? Yes, that's right. They are worried that the plant is facing closure. That will be a disaster for an area like this, which is already facing high unemployment. You know what rumours are like. We'd like to reassure you that, as far as we are aware, there is no plan to close the plant or transfer business to Poland. Management has asked us to give you their assurances on this point. We've studied the figures, and the bottom line is that there is not much money in the pot, so we have to reach a compromise. I'm sorry, but why should we believe this? Outsourcing is happening everywhere at present. Cheaper labour, cheaper factories. Well, let's not get too hot under the collar, Bob. We consider ourselves to be a fair and reasonable employer with a consistent record of commitment and honesty with our employees. There's also the Dutch plant to consider. As I mentioned when we met before, if sales continue to fall in Amsterdam, we'll have a big problem here. We think we can deal with it, but if we have to pay out more money here, then it's unlikely we can. Listen, we'd like to put our cards on the table. If your members accept three percent now, we will give a further one and a half percent in nine months, as long as there isn't a substantial drop in sales. But we want your assurances that there will be no industrial action. Could we have ten minutes to talk about it outside? Certainly. Let's break for coffee and meet back in twenty minutes. Okay, we think this is a reasonable compromise. Our members will agree three percent now and one and a half percent in nine months, and you have our assurances there will be no industrial action. That's it then. A successful conclusion for everybody. Thank you. Good. I'll send you written confirmation tomorrow, which you can post on the notice boards around the shop floor, if you like. The three percent review will take effect from the first of March. First of March.